Hey, welcome to our channel. We are the Jordans. I am TK. And I'm T. So today we're going to be talking about communication is key. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so before we even get this video started, I want to do a quick disclaimer. This is not like any sort of advice that you guys need to be taking and like going out and applying unless you feel led to. This is really more so a conversation. We are not experts. We are just um, a couple living through this. Mm -hmm. And we feel like there's not enough conversation around positive, positive conversation around marriage. Mm -hmm. And there is no one opening up the conversation really to have these conversations of how to improve your marriage and what it really takes to go through a marriage. And so basically we're just kind of given our own experience, what mm -hmm. we've learned um, from whatever is friends, families, our experience, church, um, and other people. So yeah, we'll keep the intro real short. We're gonna get right into the video. So first we wanna kinda talk about our kind of struggles in communication um, and what that looks like for us. And maybe you can relate or or maybe you don't relate or if you have any opinions or if you kinda went through this and you can kinda guide us, um, or maybe our solutions can kinda help you. So yeah, so I would say the first thing for me personally, um, I struggle, I would say struggle, really we kinda overcame this. But I always just expected him to kind of know what I needed, when I needed, when I needed it. And if I didn't get it, then I would be like upset. And in the sense that, so originally our dynamic at home was I stayed home with the kids, ran my business, and he worked full time. Mm -hmm. So he was an engineer full time. I ran, I was home all day with the girls and ran my business. And so like, we got work at five o'clock. I expected him to take over with the girls fully. Like I did not want the kids near me. You know, I never said that. So, like, if he would just, like, get off of work and, I don't know, just go on his phone or do something other than be with the girls, I would be upset. And like I'm just... Relax or something. Yeah. And I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> no, ain't none of that. And I would just be like, okay, so what are you doing? <laughs> like, I've been with these girls all day. Like, this is a task. You know? And so, I never clearly articulated that. And then there was a point where, um, I would say, like, a few months ago where I was like, okay, listen, this is how I want it to be. When five o'clock hit, you need to clock out, yeah. and then you need to be fully integrated into this, like fully into this family. Mm -hmm. um, we're getting baths. We're um, you're playing with the girls. I'm cooking. Mm -hmm. I need you to be fully engaged with us, right? right? And so before that time, it was kind of like this animosity I had. Like, so you think you're gonna just make all the money and then not play with the kids? Nah. But I had to actually sit down and had a conversation. And then when we had the conversation, it was very cordial. And he was all for it. He didn't mind. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just the fact that I needed to articulate that clearly and, mm -hmm. and precisely and say, hey, this is what I expect from you. Yeah. Can you do this? Does it work? How can we make that compromise to where you maybe you get some relaxing time or whatever? And then you're kind of with the girls. That's whatever. Important. That's really important. Expectations. You set those expectations or boundaries and you just come to your partner in a calm manner. You have you sit down. You set time to set time to sit down have a conversation where hey this is how i've been feeling this is how we can fix it can you do this or can you not and if you can't then let's figure out how we can help you do that yeah i think it helped us too and i think also like we said about like you know expectations like they change over time based off of the season of life you're in what you guys are doing right especially when you have kids right so my expectation for him when he was working his full time job and how how he was involved is going to look different now that we're both in entrepreneurship full time. Mm -hmm. So we got to kind of sit down, look at our dynamic and how that would look, and what are my expectations for him, mm -hmm. and vice versa for his. Um, and then one more thing on that, and we can come on to the next point, mm -hmm. is like I don't think it was an expectation, but something that he appreciated. And when I did this, he consistently said it. And I caught on to it. So I'm not like a big, what you would say, like a homemaker. You know, like I'm not for the cleaning and I'm not scrubbing nobody's toilet. I'm not, laundry is my, is my kryptonite. Dishes make me itch. Like, I, <laughs> like that's not my strong point, right? Yeah, for real. It's not. And so every time like I was doing the dishes and I would cook and I would clean and it would be clean and you have food, like he would really fast. Oh, I like that. Or, oh, you cook. Thank you. He would have expressed that. And so him communicating that, whether it was directly or indirectly, I had to take it in and listen. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, it encouraged me to want to, you know, do the dishes more and, 
you know, and do it willingly, you know, right. and do it with a happy heart and make the dinners with a happy heart and kind of step into my role as a wife anyway, as a mm-hmm. woman. Um, and so that kind of helped us with our, that is how I kind of listened to him communicate to me indirectly, mm-hmm. right? Communication isn't always, hey, I need this from you. Take a look at their cues, like look at what they're doing and what they're saying, how they react to certain things. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's also one point that can kind of go into that. Okay, yeah. So I think one thing that you struggled with was handling conflict, right? Your communication and conflict, you know, you were a big yeller. We um, both were. Yes, we both were big yellers, but your yell is louder than my yell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I think that's something that we had a conversation about that, right? Yes, we did. Okay, yeah. I thought like I sat you down and was like, bro, stop yelling at me. Whatever. <laughs> you don't want to smoke. Whatever. No, but we had a conversation about yelling, and I feel like you've really been, I feel like I'm still working on it. I definitely raised my voice. Yeah. But I thought you were very intentional about how, about not yelling in conversations and staying calm. Right. I think that's very important because it's like the ones who, the one who is calm in the situation, able to, you know, get their point across. You know what I mean? Yep. And it's not just about points. It's really to come to a solution. Mm-hmm. And you can never come to a solution if somebody is yelling or if both of you guys are yelling. And the only thing yelling is going to do is escalate escalate the conversation mm-hmm. escalate the debate or whatever the case may be whatever you guys are talking about approaching the situation in a calm manner is very important and it will also reduce a lot of misunderstandings exactly it will allow you to move forward in a better way um meaning that you come to a solution and you will continue to put that solution in practice yeah just have better conversations and to reduce like arguing I think it was a. I think it was in church. They were talking about um, I don't know, the, the louder, the louder you talk in the conversation, like the dumber you are, or the less you can think, or something like that. Something. I don't even use the word dumb, but it was like the the louder you were, like the less you could actually like think and focus or whatever, or articulate what you were trying to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a big struggle we had from the beginning. Um, I feel like he's kind of like he's kind of mastered it pretty well. I'm still working on it. I do raise my voice. I get really defensive. And so I'm like, what? You said I did what? And then he was like, I'm not yelling, so why are you yelling? That's not and, how I say that. <laughs> you try to mimic me. <laughs> and so yeah, so but you do really well at that though. Like I can say you like like you don't really yell at me anymore. Like when we have like conflicts or, no, or conversations. You really don't. That's not. Yeah. So I apologize. I'm gonna do better. Yelling is uh really ridiculous and it's it's uncalled for. Because it's not, you got to think about it like this. And this can be in any situation. Sometimes it's not what you say. How you say it. It's how you say it. So if you say it a different way, then, you know, they, okay, they accept it a different yeah, way. They tone. receive it a different way. That has to deal with your tone. If your tone is loud, then, okay, I'm going to take it as if you want to escalate. I'm going to take it as if you want to go into a different direction. You want to argue. You want to, you know, get up there. So let's get up there. <laughs> But if you receive it as if it's a calm manner, hey, I want to come to a solution. I want to make this better. And I don't want us to ever come up against this again because we know exactly how we will feel if that happens again. So let's figure out how we can move forward and never get to this situation again because we know exactly how, you know, makes yeah. us feel. Let's so. lead the conversation with love. The last thing that we want to talk about is communication as far as creating a vision for your family. Mm-hmm. Right. So whether you have kids or you don't have kids, you're a family, right? When you're a manager in a family. And so I think um, articulating in what you want to do, what your future looks like. I thought we've been very blessed to really kind of have the same goals, aspirations, dreams. Right. And we're usually kind of on the same page. Uh, and there have been times where we were like, you know, a little off and it showed. Um, I feel like those were really just the times where we kind of, we've been together since we were like 19 and 20. Mm-hmm. So we kind of grew up together. So obviously we change as people. Mm-hmm. So I feel like once we hit like those certain age milestones, like 21, 24, 25. Yeah, 25 for sure. Yeah, we kind of have like a, a rift in what we wanted in life. And so we make sure that we keep that open communication. Like, hey, right now we're on the ground. We're trying to, you know, build a legacy for our family. We're trying to build these businesses, mm-hmm. right? We're trying to keep financial freedom. And so we're, we're on that same page and we understand that, mm-hmm. right? And so I think that's very important to make sure that you understand what the goal is and what the vision is. Cohesion. 
Yes, exactly. Um, so it creates like a really good family cohesion. And then if you do have kids, you know, that helps, you know, how you want to raise them up. Right. Um, but I really think that um, having conversations, one thing that we were doing um, very briefly that helped a lot is I had like a little marriage check in. And so like, I literally have like a calendar in my phone like every week. I think it's like on Sundays. Yeah, Sunday. Yeah, like a, it's, I got my little notification. I thought, okay, what's three things that we did good? What's three things that we want to do better? And what's our vision for the next week? Something right. like that. And so we were answering that really quickly. Like I would sometimes do it in like passing. So we weren't even really sitting down doing this because life moves pretty fast sometimes. Mm -hmm. But just sitting down and have those conversations about where you are now and what you're doing next. Um, and then I know right now, we just transitioned into full-time entrepreneurship, both of us. So we're home together all the time. And the things that we're doing is together, mm -hmm. right? So before he was sitting at a desk working on his nine to five and I was with the girls and I was with my business. But now we're coming together and we're unifying everything, right? We have, we're going to have to sit down today and plan out what does our week look like? What days are we getting out of the house with the girls? Mm -hmm. When do we have extracurriculars for the girls? When do we need to go shoot photography? When do we need to sit down and record videos? And we have to be very clear on what it is we're doing so that we're on the same page. Mm -hmm. So that I don't wake up Monday morning and I'm like, hey, oh, I got to go to a meeting at this time and I got to do this, I got to do this. And he's like, but wait, we got to do this, this, and this. Exactly. And so there was a, there was some of that. Now that I'm, now that I'm saying this, uh -huh. we did have some of that as far as when you were working. Mm -hmm. um, so I have meetings, you would have a meeting, and then I'm like, who going to watch the kids? <laughs> exactly. You definitely have to make those times to sit down, schedule. You have all of these apps on your phone, calendar-wise, to utilize and create those times to sit down and talk. You know, your wife needs that, your husband needs that, whatever the case may be. What you have to do, what is so important and we hear all the time is make time for yourself. You have kids and we understand that. If you don't have kids and you have pets or you dedicate a lot of time elsewhere, dedicate time towards your spouse. That's important. Sit down and create that time so you can develop yourselves and strengthen yourself and create that Cohesion. Cohesion. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yes. And then one last thing that we did a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and, I, and we've already seen the fruits of our labor from it. But we made our family vision board. Yes. yes. That's important. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a video coming soon. That's a good one. Yes, we made our family, we made a family vision board. So we literally sat down. We did this with the kids. We were in the interior room. Right. And we had our computer up. We used Canva. They were running around. And we were just talking about what do we want to achieve? You know, whether it's in the next year, in the next couple years, was everything we wanted to achieve. Um, we took the most important things and we put it in the vision board, and it is a screensaver on my phone, my phone. and his phone. So yeah. we see it all the time. We've already marked off what two things we're in the process of doing one thing consistently. Yeah. So um that's how you make sure your goals align and that's how you make sure yeah. that you're going in the same direction. You know, you don't want to have a, a spouse going to the left and the other one's going to the right or one is running down the street and the other one is walking. You get what I'm saying? Exactly. So yeah. family cohesion is definitely important. Yeah, and, and communication is how you achieve that. Yes. We did a little research. Uh, we found a resource that can possibly help us and also you guys as far as communication. Um, so the expert name is? Dr. John Gottman. Um, he's a relationship expert. Um, he The Gottman Institute is the website. So basically, like, therapists can get um, certified in his teachings. If you go to the Gottman Institute, I think, .com, we'll link it down below. Um, they have great resources for you. But I did want to share a little bit about his thoughts on communication, right? Mm -hmm. So Dr. Gottman emphasizes that communication is the cornerstone of a healthy marriage. His research highlights that couples who communicate effectively are more likely to enjoy long-term relationship satisfaction. So the point of sharing that is we want to let you know that, like, don't take it from our word. Take it from an expert. This person is um, an expert in this, and they have a whole website. Um, where you could go and you Books can, too. yes, and find things. There's actually a really cool app that you can use that my mom actually recommends. My mom is a therapist. She's a doctor. That you can actually <laughs> recommend. And I'll get the app from her and I will um, link it down below. And I think it basically helps with communication and it encourages you to have a conversation with your spouse. All right. Thank you guys for watching. This is episode two of our Marriage Moment series. Uh, we have another one coming out. We need you to make sure that you subscribe, turn on your post notifications so you can get ready for that video because it's going to be a real good one that you need to see. So make sure you follow us on our social channels. We are on Instagram and we just made a TikTok. Um, <laughs> so, so we just made it. So we have like no followers. Go follow our TikTok. Go follow our Instagram. 
if there are more topics and more conversations around marriage that you want us to open up and talk about, please let us know. You have a story or you want to share anything, put it in the comments below. DM us on Instagram. Um, we would love to hear from you guys. Like I said, want this to be an open conversation. Maybe we'll hop on a live one day and answer some questions. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe. Like, comment, turn on your post notifications. Yes, and we will see y'all next video. Get ready for episode three. It's a big one.